Right, welcome guys, I think we're going. Um, yeah, welcome to the video. If you are new to the channel, uh, my name's Nick, this is my wife. Andrea. Uh, and we are resellers, we, we sell stuff online and that's how we earn a living, living. You can probably see some of the stuff behind us. And for this video, we're, we're happy to say we have with us Hannah Hardiman who works with eBay UK. So welcome, how are you? Very well, thanks. It's a pleasure to be here. Good. Now you contacted us. I guess it's a month or two back. Um, we were we were quite thrilled actually that somebody at eBay had yes had found yeah. us on the internet <laughs> and suggested that we might be able to to get together and, and have a chat and and things like that. So, how did you find us first? Could I ask that? <laughs> yeah, of course. Um, so what I do at eBay is I look after our YouTube channels for eBay for Business. So we've got two different YouTube channels. We've got one that's mainly for consumers and one that's for people running businesses on eBay. And I look after it for UK, Germany, France, Italy and Spain. I don't speak all of those languages, by the way. Um, but my production team and I were always um, looking to put content together that's about selling on eBay. And I've got kind of a, a cool job in that um, what I have to do is find really good hints and tips to share with sellers. So as part of that, I do a lot of research to see what are people talking about to do with eBay, on YouTube, Facebook, on our own discussion forums as well. And your videos kept popping up. so. I watched a few of them over a course of a few months, um, liked what you were saying, um, saw that you've got a really good vibe going on with your community. And it also struck me that there were sometimes questions coming up that either you or people in the community didn't quite know the answer to. And so I thought, well, why don't we just make contact um, if we've got some of the answers to those questions, if we can share some hints and tips people weren't aware of then yeah let's let's see what we can do together yeah fantastic that's great so but we thought as a, as a as a beginning we would um get yourself on primarily so we can get to know you a little bit and we can talk face to face and also we could learn a little bit about how you got into ebay what your role mm -hmm. is at ebay but a little bit more about you as a person as a, as a starting point so should we start there? Yes. <laughs> how, how, did you, how did you end up working for eBay, I suppose, is, is a good starting point. Okay. Um, right. Well, long story. So uh, get yourself a cup of tea. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I've been at eBay around about seven years now. And in that time, I've done lots of different things at eBay. So it's it's a really great company because they give you opportunities to work on lots and lots of different things. Um, but I'd always been really interested in the business seller side of things, particularly to do with small businesses. So over the years, I've worked on the UK launches of the Global Shipping Programme, of the Promote Your Listings Advertising um, Programme, uh, as we've launched different promotional tools like the new Multibuy tool, um, order size discount, sale event and markdown. Um, so I've been working on a lot of these really nice projects and helping them, as we say, come to market. So we have this go-to-market plan. Um, so I come from a marketing background. Um, and throughout my career, I've always been interested in some business, retail. I can give you a, the right from the beginning story of, of my career. It might be useful for people to know where I come from because I think there's sometimes this perception that everybody at eBay has had this corporate career has never worked in a small business doesn't understand what small businesses are like um, it's not the case so for me I I started working in retail at 14 um, in a Saturday job little independent clothes shop um, just on my local high street just working with customers trying to help them to find what they were looking for um, also, just learning how to like fold clothes and display them and put just put little window displays together and that sort of thing was kind of fun. Um, I then worked in department stores, so I was selling Christmas trees, mirrors, um, china and glass. So I learned about how to, to pack all those sort of items and I was a bit of a dab hand at wrapping sets of dinner plates 
cups and glasses and making sure they didn't get broken in the box of the bags on the way home for people. So yeah, completely identify with anybody who's selling in those categories, just how carefully you need to pack things. And, and even then you sometimes still get parcels with fragile all over them that get thrown over the fence. Oh, yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other thing. Couriers, don't they um, started on <laughs> Yeah, I, I've had a few of those happen to me over the years. Um, so yeah, after that, I, I also worked in supermarkets. Um, and all of this I was doing while I was studying. So I did a business degree at Kingston University in London. And it was there that I, I really discovered that I was interested in marketing. I was interested also in the people side of things. And people were saying, oh, you'll never combine what was then personnel with marketing. Um, and I found a way to do that later in life. But after I graduated from university, I worked in some marketing agencies, working on sales promotions, um, you know, the sort of buy one, get one free type thing. Um, working for PR agencies on some cool brands. And then I went, they call it client side. So you come out of the agencies and you work for the client. And I was with Laura Ashley for a number of years working on um, their marketing. And, and then it was sort of mid to late 90s. So it was all about the shop window, about in-store promotions, point of sale materials. Um, I was working across fashion and home furnishings. Um, so I was also working on things like press ads, um, radio ads. Um, and just managing the promotional calendar through the year. So when are you going to do your bed linen promotion? When is the time to be promoting lighting? Um, and then how do you get people to come in through the doors and shopping with us? But at Laura Ashley, that was still when mail order was really a big, big part of their business. And, and it was interesting to see that even with big companies, the rate of returns that they get, particularly on fashion, where people will order a couple to try them on and see what fits and then send them back. And I, I do sometimes see people posting saying, oh, well, why are people returning things? Is it just eBay? Um, but that is the nature of selling certain categories. With fashion particularly, it's really hard to know what something's going to look like on. And, and I know, Andrea, you spend a lot of time on your photographs and your measurements to try and minimise that, don't yeah, you? Definitely. Well, it's becoming part of the culture now with yeah. ASOS struggling recently. Yeah, I think that's very interesting, actually, with ASOS struggling, showing that, you know, their business model of um, buy as much as you like and send back as much as you like is obviously having an effect. I think it's having a huge effect. People yeah. take that as for granted. Oh, I don't know what size will fit me perfectly. I'll buy four sizes and send the rest back, etc. Yeah. I think that culture is really, yeah... Because we've seen that over the years since they started um, filtering down, um, right down to the smaller sellers on eBay. And customers are expecting that sort of service, aren't they? Even from the smallest sellers. So I noticed that a lot. But, yeah. Yeah. Try it on before you commit to it sort of yeah. thing. Which makes sense for clothing. I know you have to have an element it, of that. It but does. Are... But it, it does make it difficult sometimes when that culture changes and people expect free returns, free, <laughs> yeah. you know, everything. And it has an impact on the smaller seller. So, yeah. Yeah. So after I left for Russia, I then went into electronics. So I worked for a, a superstore um, chain that was... I suppose, sort of midway up the UK, all the way down to the south. Um, so we had marketing for them. We were looking after everything from white goods to um, small electronics, TVs. I, I, when I started working there, I said, like, once I start working there, I might buy myself an MP3 player because it was so exciting that you could get something like that in those days. Yeah. Um, but that was around... That must have been around year 2000 when a lot of retailers were starting to think about, do I start selling online? What's this going to do to my, my high street business? Um, and even then people were saying, I, I, how is this going to work out? Um, so I spent a couple of years there doing marketing for them. A couple of things changed. I, I changed direction a little bit, went into advertising. So it's advertising sales 
for a couple of years. But that was for a much smaller company. It was one of those, um, you know, the sort of property lifestyle magazines that come through the door, yeah. um, giving you this aspirational view of what your home could look like. And um, so I worked with a lot of local retailers who wanted to advertise in those magazines. And having had that background in marketing myself and having worked in retail, it was quite useful to be able to talk to small businesses who knew they wanted to advertise and knew they wanted to get more footfall, but didn't quite know how to go about doing it. So it was, it was a little bit of consultancy as well as doing the ad sales with them. But by putting that time in and helping them, we could start seeing more results in their business and it was also doing little things like in the ad asking people to like quote where they'd seen it so that people knew where that was actually coming from when people came in um i then took some time out and traveling that's a whole other chat in itself um but when i came back i i really changed direction and i thought well one of the things that i'd always really enjoyed with my job was helping people to figure out where they wanted to go, whether it's career, business. So I retrained as a coach and started doing business coaching and training. So I did that for about eight years. And I was working with a lot of small business owners on things like um, strategy, marketing, but also work-life balance, figuring out where they wanted to take their business. Um, if they had staff, how, was, how were they going to get the most out of their staff? Um, so really, really loved that. And I even started a, a YouTube channel about 10 years ago. And it was really low key. And it was just me talking to camera for about a minute every week, sharing some tip that I'd learned. Um, and even though the following was really small, I could then see the power of something as personal as YouTube and just building a relationship with people and people getting to know you. And that for me was a, a brilliant way of getting clients because I didn't have to go out to all the networking events that you're told to do as a small business and shaking lots of hands and swapping business cards with people and you never know if anything's gonna come from it. I'm but gonna when... for that YouTube channel now. <laughs> no, don't. <laughs> it's still there. <laughs> it's still there. Um, you, you probably won't find it. Right. Um, but the production values were not great. Um, sometimes I, I I did this the week, whether I felt like it or not. Um, but yeah, the people who watched it, they used to find it useful. But because there weren't, um, there wasn't social media then. Well, not to the extent it is now. Um, just telling people that new tips were there was quite tricky. So we had to build an uh, email marketing list to just notify people there was a new video. So things have come a long, long way since then. Um, but I think what's been a big theme for me is this passion I've always had for small business and trying to help in some way by sharing something that I've learned or something that I can that I know is going to work for them if they give it a try. And, and that's also what I really liked about your channel, that you do share tips and it's useful stuff. And, and sometimes you'll do a screen share and you'll show people how to do things. Like your video recently about promoted, uh, sorry, promote your listing. Yeah. I thought it was great because it, it's a real life situation and it helps people to get a feel for whether it could work for their business. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I mean, we've, we always try to say that we're not here to teach people how to do things. We're not here to tell people how to do things. We we simply share our experience of things um, yeah. on a ground well, level, really. With promoted listings, I think I said in that video, I was very skeptical about the whole idea. It just feels like we're paying mm. for something that should be done for us anyway. Yeah. Um, but I was pleasantly surprised. And I'm using it now, and I think a lot of people have taken it up on the back yeah, of that video. I, so I definitely use yeah. it. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Yeah, and I think with that one in particular, what a lot of people don't realise is there's there's been this perception that it's just about boosting your position in best match. Hmm. But and, and I think it's something you picked up on, Nick. When you pay to promote a listing, 
you're unlocking all of these other places on eBay that you can only be advertised if you're doing that campaign. So we call them ad placements. Um, but basically, there are slots that are all over the eBay site that are only accessible if you are in that ad campaign. Um, so it's not just about where am I appearing in best match? And we can talk about how to optimize your positions in best match later as well. Um, but yeah, it's little things like that that maybe people don't realize. And when we've got a page on Seller Center to talk about it or a two minute video, because a lot of our followers on our YouTube channel like really short, sharp, to the point videos, you don't always get that chance to explain all the nuances of it. So I thought it was useful what you did. Um, I've noticed that on my email on the side where adverts come up, um, sort of items, eBay items come up, and I've noticed a couple of my promoted eBay items come up. Ah, okay. AOL. <laughs> oh, really? So, I, yeah, I didn't know that that it worked that way, but I've noticed that a couple of my photos have come up, and I'm like, oh, that's my listing. Yeah. Yeah. I've certainly been promoted my own items to myself. <laughs> quite, quite. <laughs> Outside of eBay, so I thought that was quite interesting. Oh, right, yeah. That's a little scrolling little ads yeah. there. Yeah, ah, interesting. Yeah. The so, other thing that you might not notice, what well, you might not be aware of, is that eBay sends a lot of listings to Google Shopping. So uh, the, we did put out a video a while ago about um, Google Shopping, and we actually had somebody from Google on the channel talking about it. Um, but there are certain things that you absolutely have to have right on your listing, otherwise they don't get um, accepted by Google Shopping. And it's things like having a, a really clear product shot, um, it's having the brand name in the listing, having certain item specific specifics filled in and they are like, mandatory for it to appear on Google Shopping. Um, so they're looking at for fashion, it will be things like um, size, colour. If those aren't in the item specific, but they're maybe in the description, it's not going to pick up um, that that information is there. It needs to be in the item specific. Yeah, I've noticed that and I like the way that it prompts you as well. So if you mm. You know, with older listings that I haven't, those item specifics weren't available when I first made the listing. Um, when I go back to revise, it now prompts me to add colour or... Yeah. yeah. And that's not only going to help on getting onto Google Shopping, but when people are shopping on their phone, because you, you might be putting in something like, I don't know, women's dress size 14, you could end up with hundreds of thousands of listings come up. So most people go straight to filters and they start filtering by the style or the color or something like that. And the way that eBay works is that we only draw that information from the item specifics. So if somebody's searching using filters and that matching information isn't in the item specific, it's not gonna show up. Yeah. And it's gonna disappear from the results. So with description, it's really just to add the things that, um, like, say if there are any um, faults with the item or, um, I mean, I tend to put measurements in the item specifics anyway, but um, you could add extra measurements or just extra information. So once you've decided, yes, this is the item for me, you want to find out extra information about it, that's where you should put it, but yeah. not for all of the other things. Well, it really depends. Um, it really depends on the type of product that you're selling, whether it's brand new in its box or whether it's been used, if it's a refurbished mobile phone, for example, you might need to go into a bit more depth on the description. But with so many people shopping on their mobile these days, it's about firstly getting found, having a good lead photo that makes people click through and, and say, oh, I want to have a look at that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, when, when it comes to list, listing optimization, it really depends which part, of, like we call it a funnel, uh, which part of that funnel you need to optimize. Is it that you're not showing up? Um, is it that people aren't clicking through so you're not getting enough views on your listing? Is it that they're viewing but they're not converting, so they're not actually like, buying the item? Um, 
or is it that you're having problems with people saying well that's not what I thought I was buying um, and yeah that's I mean do you find this Nick when you're listing parts and accessories that do you find you use the fitment tables to help people to find what they're looking for or are you using something else I have done um, it hasn't always worked it hasn't always been easy um, do you mean the ones where where eBay has for car parts the, the list that the yeah part? sorry internal phrase it um the yeah. vehicle vehicle compatibility yeah yeah um, I've used that where I can and I, I would hope that that's been helpful for people finding yes, it yes it's also a, we've also fallen foul a bit though because it's um we've had returns where people have said in the table it showed that it was for this particular model mm. not 100 percent accurate yeah. at all which is understandable i guess but it's frustrating when somebody's bought something on the strength of i saw my car in that list yeah. and it didn't mm, work. That, okay that's, you know that's one in mm. 500 yeah. to a thousand parts i might have sold so it's not terrible um but yeah that's useful i found i think the most useful thing with that is having the actual part number as written on the box in the title. I think that's, that's mm -hmm. why people are finding the items, if I'm totally honest. I think people, if they have access to the part number, they'll just punch that in and and up comes a list of things and hopefully yours is there. Yeah. Um, it's really hard to know sometimes how people are finding your items and what works and what doesn't. Mm, okay. What of all the different steps that eBay would like us to do is actually performing and functioning. Mm. Um, well, I, I think if you start at that top of the funnel and and think about what's going to get you good visibility of your listing, so getting the title right, using as many characters as you can, but not keyword spamming. So don't just put words in there for the sake of it. And, and in particular, don't ever put a brand name that is not what you're selling um, because yeah, serious policy violation there. And it also leads to so many bad experiences for both the buyer and the seller. Um, but yeah, use as many keywords as make sense to in the title. Have some good, clean pictures. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do find that the more pictures you've got, the better things can convert. And I think it's because people are on their phone and they're just sort of sweeping through mm. all the pictures. Um, item specifics really important because of filters and also checking that people um, checking that it is a match to what people are actually looking for and that's what the algorithm is about it it's finding the listings that are the, the best match to what that person is actually trying to find um, and it does learn over time so it's looking at um, all sorts of different things when it calculates your position but some of that can be down to whether items like that have sold well before whether that listing has sold well before and I know that's something that can be particularly challenging if you're reselling individual items that you've got no sales history on yeah. that and that's where um, promoting a listing can be quite useful that if something has been on eBay for a couple of months and you're just waiting for that right buyer to come along, you might start seeing other listings going ahead because they've got a history of, of selling. Um, but when you pay to promote it, you're just giving that, that extra boost again and getting it in front of people. Yeah. Um, so yeah, lots of things to do. Uh, the other thing that can work really well is just thinking about what's gonna convert people from browsing to buying. And it can be things like um, putting a promotion on. So we talked earlier on about the multi-buy promotional tool. Um, there's the, the order discount tool, which is like spend £100, get 10% off, or buy three, get one half price. Um, and also doing sales from time to time, where it's going to show the previous price and the discounted price. Um, plus things like offering free postage and I know that's one that often causes a lot of discussion it does it's a it perennial does. that comes up all yeah. the time should we be doing yeah. it and, and does I've, it work I've had two periods where I've tried it uh, for a, a number of months and then gone back to adding postage and noticed absolutely no difference in my sales interesting okay I've I've had different well I've heard different stories from other sellers where they've seen that 
when they did a test of like putting it on for say two weeks with the postage separate and then putting it on with um, free postage what I've heard from them was that it was always the free postage that can mm. better, better for them yeah it might depend a bit on what you're selling because Maybe. you you tend yeah. to go for the more sort of unique or vintage items and if somebody wants that they're not going to care one way or the other and it may yeah. be like the item of that ilk yeah, on ebay it's possibly that so uh, you know it yeah it may depend a lot on what you're selling whether it's yeah. mainstream stuff and with non-clothing we tend to mix it up don't we some some i go with whatever i feel like when i'm listening <laughs> some things we don't or, or if the amount um would come to like 20 pounds if i added the postage on i'll just do 20 pounds free shipping yeah because it just feels like a nice round number I'd, uh, yeah I, I kind of flip between the two really and people constantly ask on the channel um why how do you decide nick between adding postage and having free postage because i've noticed looking at your store yeah. that it's a mix and i'm like yeah. depends how i feel well, at the, at for the time. instance mm. with, Stuff, but. with the haul that we've just purchased uh, we've got lots of board games and i started to draft some so that nick could add the photos and upload and I'd added postage to, I think I, I did about four of them, added postage. And then um, a couple of them you took, you did free postage on because you thought that it would get the sales quicker because it would be more yeah, competitive. Yeah, it was looking pricing. at competition. So you took the postage off and did free postage and then they sold straight away. So. <laughs> Whether that was because of the free shipping, yeah, yeah we, we don't know. <laughs> <laughs> we never know which element of all the little things we might do gets us a sale. Apart from promoted listings, because you can now go in and see which sales were clicked through a promoted listing. Yes. So yeah, we can actually handy. see that works. But all the other things we might do or not do, we have no idea how that affects sales. Ah, uh, okay. That's kind of yeah. a big guessing game as to what's working. Um, but it was yeah. really fascinating just then listening to you because you obviously have a wealth of knowledge about what goes on behind the scenes at eBay and, and the things that we can do to actually help. Um, because there's, there's so many theories out there about what we should be doing, what we shouldn't be doing, and, and what, what's going on behind the scenes. So it's great mm. for me to just listen to you because you know facts about eBay and what's going on and stuff like that. And I was just thinking, moving forward, um, we, we kind of did a test run and spoke to the community and said, um, what issues are you having with the app, for an example? And we mm -hmm. had huge amount of feedback from that that we shared with you is yeah. that how you see this moving forward that we could discuss a topic at a time and and feedback from the community what their concerns are or what they like and don't like and then and then you feed back to us how do you see this progressing yeah um well i think that there's like i know you often get asked by people i'm starting out on ebay what's your advice and it's like wow there's so much we could be talking about um i imagine it's the same when you ask what they'd like to hear from ebay that it's going to be loads and loads of topics so i think it makes sense if we start to identify some of the hot topics that people want to know about um when we talked separately offline we we said maybe is it global shipping program is it something else that people have got a lot of questions about um i don't know all the answers um but i do have colleagues who may be willing to come on and talk to you when we when we identify those specific topics. yeah um do you think that would work I, I think so and i think that there's so much to talk about ebay is a whole you know it's it's a there's just so many topics and when we've talked before like you said we, we could come up with a hundred different topics really but i think you just mentioned gsp i mean just to hear you know the background behind that you said you worked on it when it was mm -hmm. implemented um and we could feedback what we as sellers think works um and the questions that we have mm -hmm you know and just pick a subject at a time like that that may seem like a small subject but i'm sure we could talk for an hour easily about just sure gsp <laughs> and um yeah and and take it from there really and then if we know in advance what we're going to talk about we can talk to the community through the facebook group find out concerns and things and then feed those into the discussion and i think that would work mm. work really well and like you say if there is an expert who could answer more specific questions about a, a concern or or yeah or a tool that people are yeah. using that would be fantastic yeah. Yeah. go back and say that 
just listening to your story and how you've progressed and and where you are now um i find that really interesting that um it shows us that people working for ebay like you say are not just corporate you know you've, you've got that um experience in what you're doing like with your story um you've seen retail evolve over the years and mm -hmm. you've been active in that and you've been a part of that and um i think that's really reassuring for us as sellers to see that the people that work for ebay have that experience too so that you you know you know what you're talking about because you've had that experience and 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 just the fact that you've worked in re retail yeah. We feel we have a kinship because we all know what face-to-face yeah. -face yeah. retail is a whole yeah. other world of, of yeah. service. Oh, so. and, and seen firsthand how much it has changed, you know, just yeah. in the last 20 years. Because we come from a retail background, traditional retail background, and have kind of evolved into online only. Yeah. Um, mm. yeah, it's great to know that you've got that retail background because you yeah. understand some of the fundamental issues that we deal with. Exactly. <laughs> But I think what's interesting over the years is that um, where when when eBay started and when you started selling on eBay, shopping online was kind of scary. Mm. Um, that yeah, there were checks flying around, sometimes cash flying around through the post. Definitely, and you didn't know if if you were actually going to get that thing that someone had promised you, um, or that you'd taken someone's commitment to buy something you didn't know if they were ever going to pay you so i think as as times have changed online shopping has moved from being quite a niche thing where it was all about unusual items that you just couldn't find anywhere else to people moving a much much a much greater proportion of their spend online and so people who haven't been shopping online all that long are comparing sites like eBay to pure retailer websites um, and so they're expecting the same kind of experience yeah. and, and I know eBay often gets criticized by sellers for saying well you only ever listen to what buyers want and there is some truth in that in that we need to give the people who are shopping online the experience that they expect and that means that we have to keep moving with the times things have to evolve the way that we structure things the way that we make sure that there aren't pockets of sellers who are actually causing a bad experience for people because that that actually damages the reputation of the entire selling community and because we don't sell anything ourselves it's it's our sellers it's people like you and, and all the people in your community who are ebay as far as the customer is concerned um so if there are people who whether it's through mistakes or it's intent aren't following policies aren't giving a good experience and there's something consistent then i think the community would like us to do something about that to protect everybody else's reputation um, and to make sure that people keep coming back to eBay, that they don't let one bad experience put them off. Because um, I think we've we've all had that friend or that family member who said, oh, um, I bought something and can you help me? Um, so th this is one of the reasons why we do have to look at um, policies, we have to sometimes change things and it can feel a bit uncomfortable if you've been on eBay a long time because it can feel like well why do you, does this need to change um, but that's because we have access to all this information from the people who are shopping on eBay who are always telling us what they want to see yeah that's completely understandable because as I was saying that it retail is evolving it's constantly yeah. evolving so we have to keep up with the times as sellers ourselves and you know as a as a company um but um, I, think, I, I think that sometimes the smaller sellers do feel the pressure that um we need to be like the bigger companies yeah, and exactly offer the same I mean. things and um we feel like we're having our, our arms twisted to be something that sometimes we don't feel we are with the yeah. free returns and the free shipping and things and that that's caused a lot of friction over the last couple of years 
um, and that would be an interesting subject to tackle one yeah, day about <laughs> between a small business and a big business on eBay and how we feel yes. we feel sometimes as as a small business and I know a lot of the community people in the community do that we're we're trying to be treated as if we're some big business and we can't really mm. have the expectations that eBay has of us as sellers yeah or we just don't want to yeah. <laughs> Whereas at the same time, we understand that obviously... The reasons why, yeah. Yeah, we understand that it's evolving and we have to be a part of that too. But, yeah. Yeah, that would be an interesting conversation yeah, to have. Mm. So, I think we've covered what we wrote down, actually. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so moving forward, um, I guess we'll have a, a, a conversation and pick a topic um, and come up with um a way of getting some information from the community about what the concerns are and we'll feed them mm -hmm. back to you and then we'll do, do you foresee that we'll we'll do a, a live hangout like this or how would how would we do it moving forward do you think well let's see how the topics progress um because there might be people who are the expert in a topic um, but they're not able to, say, do an evening chat or something like that when most people might be online and want to interact. Um, so I'm just going to say on that, timing is, isn't a problem because we could do it off air and, and release it at any point. It doesn't necessarily either have to be live. And whether we could do these chats live with a live Q&A going on is another question in itself, yeah, really. it could be the um, week. <laughs> but timing isn't an issue. You know, we could we could okay. record them and release them, so that's not a problem. I'd rather speak to somebody who can, you know, has has the information that would be really interesting yes. to listen to rather than mm. than not. Yeah. Uh, I, just, I just thought of a subject that I was trying to remember that that's been coming up a lot recently that would be great to get some answers on, and that is the click and collect. There's a lot of issues with because it's been rolled out to like corner shops uh, and other places mm. now. And some of those places are not receiving the packages. They're not. They're not claiming their staff. They're getting returned to us. We had one the other mm -hmm. day. Yeah. And a lot of our friends in the community have had issues with that. So that would be interesting to find out why that. Okay. Happened. Because it was always um, Argos and Argos in Sainsbury's, the click and collect. Yeah. And I believe it's been rolled out to, you know, high street, corner shops and stuff, yeah. and they're just not understanding how it works. I think and stuff's coming back. Mm. Yeah. So we're. Right. Um, issues where like a, a Saturday person or a part-time person has received a, a parcel and said oh no that person doesn't live here <laughs> just sent it back again yeah. <laughs> when we had we went to a click and collect um, little corner shop in yeah. London and it got sent back saying um, what, what's it person doesn't live here yeah or own a person has <laughs> gone away or something I don't so, know <laughs> So okay. there's a communication with, I think, training the staff in these places that it's been rolled out to. So that would be an interesting conversation to find out if, if eBay is understanding that that's going on and what's in place to sort that out. Because my confidence in Click and Collect has gone through the floor since we've had returns on it. Yeah. But, okay. Well, it's not an area that I work on, but I can find out whether there's somebody who does work on Click and Collect that might be able to come and have a chat with you. Um, I think as as you're asking the community for some of the maybe issues, topics that they want to talk about, just a few things to bear in mind. Um, if there are really specific problems that people are having, and I hope they're not, but if there are, um, there are a few key things that are, are useful for us to know. Um, whether they are using desktop or the app, is useful um, also if they're on a desktop are they on a Mac are they on a, a Windows computer if they're on the app are they on Apple are they on Android which versions are they using um, but also something that can change how eBay um, looks to a user is whether you're registered as a private user or as a registered business account because some of these things are quite different and work differently depending on whether you're registered with us as a private user or you're registered as a business right some of the tools are developed specifically for those situations um so uh, we'd we'd seen some discussion about the app recently and i noticed in some of what you shared with me people saying oh well that 
doesn't seem to be the case for me. And I think that is where there are the differences between whether somebody is on a private account or a business account. And then maybe somebody was looking at an iPhone and someone else was looking at an Android phone. They're going to see things a bit differently. Um, and also one of the benefits of being registered as a business is being able to get access to um, Bella Hub, to all the other features that are designed for business users, which are to a certain extent simplified if you're on a private account. So if you want access to all the those advanced features, um, you're often better off on a business account. Yeah. Um that was something that we were talking about before when you said that um, when people are talking about their problems that they're having or issues they're having, like for example, with the app, to um, talk about the specific problems so that you were yeah. talking about the fact that you try to, when you're fixing a problem, try to recreate that problem. Exactly. Why it happens and then use that information to, to correct it. So you need more sort of specifics as to why that person is experienced that experience that with you or what they've done to for that to happen or yeah, yeah. exactly. So if anybody ever contacts eBay to say, oh, something's not working right for me, we don't know whether it's that you've got um, a slow internet connection and a page is timing out, or if it's a browser issue, or if it's something else that hasn't gone quite right on eBay and so our technical team have to go through this process of what they call reproducing the issue so they need to know right from right I went to ebay.co.uk I clicked my eBay I clicked selling I did this I went to the listing tab on marketing that's right on uh, seller hub and then I tried to create a listing this way and and that that had moved it changed it wasn't doing what it's supposed to do um and there's also quite a difference between us getting feedback on things that are design um comments with people saying oh well i'd prefer if you did it that way and and someone saying well yesterday it was working fine and i've just tried to do it this morning and it's timing out or, or something else is going wrong so if there's ever an issue where your customer's telling you that they can't pay or you're not receiving orders or you're having trouble getting items out the door, eBay needs to know about that and they need to know those specifics every time. You all right there, Nick? I need to go down the but yeah, if, if anybody's experiencing problems like that, then don't just talk about it on a Facebook group or put a comment somewhere. Tell eBay, because it's only when we're told about these things and we're given that specific information that we can have a look into it. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So now I don't know what to say because you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you're back. <laughs> you're right. Sorry. With a glass of water? Or? Yeah. That's yeah. <laughs> I'll get these dry, tickly coughs and they yeah. don't go so away. So, uh, just as a follow up to that, so when we talk about specific things or we ask the community specific things, if um, you know, if you're watching and you want to talk about specific details in in any of the questions that we might ask for um, further hangouts or videos that we do then to be more specific about certain problems that you've had and and then it's more useful for you. Oh, it's much more useful than, oh, eBay is just not right for me or something like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, certainly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Are we thinking we should wrap this up there? Or I do think we've covered everything that we, we talked about. Okay. Trying to cover. Yeah, I think that's great. We, we really thought it would be important for people to find out who you are and a, and a bit about you. So that was fantastic that we, we learned a bit about your story and then moving forward, how we can have this conversation between ourselves and the community 
and, and eBay through yourself. So yeah, it's yeah, just that's... really good to be able to bridge that gap, isn't it? And to have that communication. Yeah, because like we said to you when we had our first chat, I think it, it feels sometimes that we're very detached from eBay. I mean, we, we don't have a business without eBay. Likewise, eBay doesn't have a business without sellers. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it feels like there isn't a, a communication there. So hopefully we can address that a tiny little bit by having chats with you so fantastic absolutely and the thing is we want you all to do well yeah, yeah definitely well it's in it's in ebay's <laughs> interest so yeah makes... well exactly <laughs> yeah. but yeah no, that was fantastic i hope you enjoyed that yeah yeah thank you good and and we'll speak to hannah again soon um we'll come up with a, a topic at some point yes probably not between now and christmas no i think we'll wait till the world i've got long till christmas now and so um, we'll yeah yeah and we'll get a conversation going and and as we were saying before tackle subjects one at a time yes. uh, in small bite-sized chunks because that will make sense and i think work a lot better so thank you so much for joining us hannah that was really you're welcome thank you um please when it, when you're watching this after the fact um drop a comment below let us know what you thought let us know some topics if you like we'll we do read all the comments on these videos yeah. um and how you think um this could work moving forward with this conversation um yeah and let's let's know if you enjoyed it yeah okay so thanks so much hannah yes thank, thank you Take care and we'll see you Take soon. Care. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.